Hello everyone and welcome to our third episode in our 30 day Tesseract Dice Kickstarter campaign video series. Yesterday we talked about precious gems and today we're going to be talking about precious metals. And again, precious metals aren't always precious because they're useful, sometimes they're just pretty or rare. But because of supply and demand, they become more and more expensive. However, a lot of precious metals are still quite valuable. Silver has a lot of antibacterial properties. Bacteria actually doesn't like to live on the surface of silver, so a lot of doctor's tools utilize silver because if they use them on you, you can't really get sick between patient to patient. Gold is very, very useful because it's highly conductive, just like copper. And both of these are gonna be used a whole lot inside computer or electronic components. They work in circuits, they work in batteries, they work in processors, they work in your screen. Whole lot of reasons why you want gold and copper other than just, let's say, jewelry. Platinum is much, 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 much rare and might be a little bit prettier, might be used in different tools and things like that, but it has far less practical uses as even, say, aluminum. However, aluminum is far less valuable because it's so stinking common and so easy to produce. Aluminum is one of the lightest of our metals and when used in alloys or combinations of different metals, it can actually be rather strong. However, one of my personal favorite metals is titanium, which is stronger than steel, which is in itself an alloy to make it stronger and is as light as aluminum. It's this miracle substance and it too is actually a little bit rare. It's rather disappointing that one of our best materials is too rare to use in as many things as we like to use it in. So titanium would be this great metal, but it has this shortcoming. Luckily enough though, like in yesterday's episode when we talked about Q carbon compared to diamonds, there is a synthetic substance that we have created that is stronger and lighter than almost any metal we know of, and this is called carbon nanotubes. Now, just like yesterday, Q carbon was something that was subject to immense heat and pressure, which made it stronger and harder than diamonds. And the great thing about carbon is it's a really, really common substance. It's only the sixth element on our periodic table of elements, which means it's really, really stinking common. And carbon nanotubes are no different. They are synthetically made carbon structures, but they're made out of carbon. Now they can be a little bit difficult to manufacture because carbon nanotubes get their immense strength from the fact that they're millions of millions of little tiny carbon cylinders stacked on top of each other. So when you press them down, they have a lot of combined strength. It'd be sort of like stacking a bunch of plastic straws together in a big structure and trying to press down. They actually get really, really strong when you have all these spheres pressing up against each other. Imagine that shrunk down to a microscopic level and instead of using plastic, which in itself is pretty flexible, use carbon, which is basically the same thing you have in charcoal briquettes, which can be as hard as a rock already. But carbon nanotubes aren't just great because they are light and strong. In fact, lighter and strong stronger than titanium, they also have several sort of miracle uses, including purifying salt water. Scientists have recently discovered that by pouring salt water through carbon nanotube structures, they can actually filter out the salt particles. This is incredibly great news if we were able to mass produce this effect. You have states like California, which have lots and lots of salt water and very, very little fresh water, which is actually used for drinking, the important thing that we use water for, and the salt water isn't so great for that. Now there are are saltwater facilities which evaporate salt water in order to pull fresh water from the salt water and leave the salt behind, but that's very costly. And as the water absorbs the heat from the heat structure, it actually cools it back down and then energy has to be used to heat it back up before it can purify more water. It's very, very impractical. Yet with carbon nanotubes, it's basically just pouring it through a very, very advanced version of a life straw. Basically, as you pour the water in, the salt is going to be taken out. Life straws really only take out imperfections, but carbon nanotubes could be the future of hydrating the world. Not to mention making our airplanes, our tanks, our cars, our computers, and our cell phones stronger, faster, lighter. All these great things just because some scientists put a very, very common substance in a very, very unique structure. Thank you so much for watching today's episode on precious metals and carbon nanotubes. And make sure to join us tomorrow when we talk about Thomas Edison, not just his Edison bulb, his true greatest invention, the electrical infrastructure that went around it, 
and why it may not be as great as you think it was, but probably better than you already thought. And if you'd like to support our Kickstarter campaign or just check out more pictures and videos of the dice, you can check the link below in the description below. And we will see you tomorrow when we get talking about the electrical infrastructure that Thomas Edison made. See you guys then.